This is a short video showing you how the activity should be presented for the exam. I'll go through part A first and then I'll cover part B. So part A activity one is the screen prints of the relationships and literally all you do is open a Word document, paste in an image of your relationships from Access and save it using the PDF file name. Activity 2 has a template which will be provided in the exam. It's got two parts to it and you need to make sure you complete this one as requested. I know when students have done this for me, they've missed bits out and that's a great shame because they've probably done the activity but not evidenced it correctly so they've lost marks. So just be careful with this one. The first part is the table structures and you need to add screen prints for each of your tables in design view, just showing the table names, the field names and the data types only. So here we've got four images, one for each of the tables. And then the second part is about the validation. And if we just scroll down, for this you need to ensure that the validation and the field that it is applied to can be clearly seen in your screenshots. So you need to show on the field and then you need the design grid at the bottom and just make sure nothing's truncated here and that the examiner can see absolutely everything. So you need a screen print for your presence check. So in this case that was on the date of birth. You need a screen print for the length check. So that could be any short text field where you've changed the field size. You need a value lookup or a range check. You don't need both. I did this player position rating as a range check. And so you can see the validation rule and the validation text in the design grid. And then a table lookup. We need a screen print of one of your table lookups that you've applied. So wherever you've created a foreign key in a table, you need to again make sure that everything's visible for the examiner and nothing's truncated. So in this case, I've used the mentor ID. That was a foreign key in player. And you can quite easily see when we click on the lookup tab, this combo box is based on a table and there's the SQL for the row source. Format check. In this case, it was an input mask and it was the input mask on the initial. So again, showing the field highlighted and the, in the design grid, the input mask that you've used. WG3 has a template as well. And this one requires evidence of your queries and your report. So we need query A or query one in design view. And again, just make sure that the examiner can see all of the tables and all of the design grid of the query. And again, nothing's truncated. Again, students will lose marks if the examiner can't see everything in the image. And we also need a data sheet view as well of the query when it's been run. And then we've got the second query, part B, query two. Again, a design grid. Make sure you widen any columns in your design grid so that the examiner can see everything. Like for this calculation, for example, it's not truncated with bits missing. So we've got the design grid and we've also got the results. And then the report. We need to see the report in design view. So there's an image of it in design view. And if there are any calculations, you need to make sure that these are visible to the examiner. Again, you might have done them, but if the examiner can't see them in your design, you won't get the marks. And then the query that goes with the report, we need to see it in design view. Again, widen any columns to make sure that the examiner can see everything, the results of that query. And I've put in a little image here of the report. But don't forget you need to save that report as a PDF and include it in your folder for the examiner. I've just put here an image showing that it's been opened in a browser and therefore it's been saved as a PDF. Activity four is the testing of the table structure and validation and you will be provided with a test log as a template in the exam and this is what you need to complete. 
Make sure you number all your tests, you select the correct test type, you show all the test data, you write down exactly what your expected results are, and you have screen prints or images which match and show the test data that you've used and the result of using that test data. If I have no template, you'll need to open a Word document and key in your evaluation. Just check it through, make sure there's no spelling mistakes or grammatical errors. And you don't need to write a lot for this evaluation. As you can see here, mine's just go, gone over one page. Obviously, it depends on your font size and things. But you don't need to write massive amounts for that evaluation. Now we're on to part B, and this is activity six. Again, there's a template provided for this. And this is all about the input forms. So we need a screen print of the first input form in form view. We need a screen print of the form in design view. Now, you've probably done quite a lot of formatting and things for this form. So it's a good idea just to take some little images of the things that you've done. So, for example, the referee ID, that was disabled. The level number was set up as a combo box value list. We set the form to data entry. I've taken off the navigation buttons, the record selectors and the scroll bars. We also need screen pins of the macro that you've created or code if you've used code. And then this is the evidence for the second form. Again, there's an image of the form in form view, an image of the form in design view. And it's important with this one where you've got calculations and things that you provide evidence of those calculations. There's various different ways of doing this. I've just taken an image of the actual control and then shown the contents of it in the expression builder. So we've got the evidence there of the calculation, sorry, of the if and the D sum used. I've also put in evidence of the query builder. This is for the drop down for the team names. So again, the examiner can see how I've created uh, or got all those teams that haven't been played yet. And a little bit here showing how I have formatted that combo box. There's no macros in this particular form and we've shown exactly all the detail of how the form works. Activity 7 has a template. This is the test log and it's provided in the exam and you need to make sure you've completed all the columns correctly. All your tests are numbered. They've got the correct type of test. You've got all the test data that you're using. State what your expected results are and the associated images for every test. Activity 8 is the evaluation for part B. And there's no template for this. You will need to open a Word document and key in your evaluation and make sure you save it as a PDF using the file name provided in the activity. It's a good idea to practice completing these templates prior to the exam so that you are completely understanding of what's required and how to present these templates to maximise your marks and not lose any silly marks just because you've not provided the evidence correctly. So that's the end of the Martleypool College database. I hope you found this playlist of videos helpful and that you are going to be successful with your exam. All the best.